Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and you know one of the wonderful things about life, especially life here in California, is that just about everywhere you look, we are surrounded by stories, by wonderful human stories. Stories about success and failure, hopes and dreams, rich stories about people. And that's especially true right here in Hollywood. We're on Coanga Boulevard, right at the intersection of Coanga and Waring. And right over here on the corner is this little shop called Willie Shoe Service, custom made and rebuilt shoes. And this is the kind of place that if you weren't looking, you would just drive right by this and never even notice it. But if you do notice it and stop and go inside this little building right here on this corner, you'll find a wonderful human story, a success story. Okay, we've come inside and here's the guy right here, the main man. Yes, sir. Introduce yourself to everybody, Willie. My name is Willie Rivera, Willie Baldo Rivera. I'm from Mexico City and I'm um, living here in the United States in 1949. Now, I've had some conversations with you, so I know that uh, you've been working with shoes long before you came to this country. Oh, yes. I started to, to learn when I was 10 years old. And when I was about 14, I was already making shoes. Now, was this something that just came naturally to you? Did you feel comfortable doing it right off the bat? Well, it was nice. My great-grandfather was a shoemaker. My grandfather was a shoemaker. So I have in the family, my background. It was in your uh, blood. Right. So I said, no, I have to be keep going with this trade with my family. And I'm glad I did because uh, I know that I make my mind. I said, these people woke up in the morning and they have to wear shoes. It's the same as a food. So I want to make a shoes. And you've been making them. Well, let's say you came to Los Angeles in 1949. You told me that as soon as you got here, you started working in a shoe factory. I, I came in a, a looking for the job Monday, and the next, the next day I was sitting in the shoe factory, second spring. That factory they don't exist anymore, but at that time, there was a lot of work in the shoe factories. But you didn't want to just work in somebody else's shoe factory. You wanted your own business. Right. I went to the first shake I get in, my, in the shoe factory. I wore one hammer. I still have the hammer. And I make up my mind. I say, I'm going to make a shoes in this country. And, and every week I was buying one tool, one tool. And six months I bought it last. I bought it last and tools. And I was making shoes for little money just to let the people know that I was a shoemaker. Just kind of on the side from yeah. your regular job. Yeah. When did you open up your first shoe shop? In 1954, uh, and in 5326 Melrose, across the street from Paramount. Right across the street from Paramount Pictures, and that ended up being probably the best decision you made in your life. Right, I was so lucky because the, I opened Saturday, and Wednesday, Mr. Richardson, the, who was the head of the water department in Paramount, sent the secretary, was Alice, and she says, are you really? She said, yes. Mr. Richardson wants you to make all Paramount work. I all said, the Paramount wardrobe shoes, new you shoes, got that just like shoes, that? Right. New shoes and repairing, everything what I needed. And it was a blessing. Well, that was your whole, that could have been your whole income right there, just working for Paramount Pictures. Yes, and also for, for Western Costume. You were right across the street from Western Costume. I, I used to work in Western Costume, and then Western Costume was my customer because they used to send me a lot of work from Western Costume too. Now, is that how you met all of these stars? I met, I met all of these people, and uh, in my, the first, I never had the idea to collect pictures, but they gave it to me every picture I used to work on. So all of these pictures, I want to go through some of these. Bing Crosby up there, you made shoes for Bing Crosby? Yes, he used to wear size eight, eight and a half. What about uh, Ronald Reagan over here? He was the, 11. 
Levin Shoe, Paul Newman. He used he, Paul Newman. No, I never make shoes for him. I repair shoes for him, but I never make shoes. Repaired shoes for him. shoes for him. Yes. Doris Day. Oh yes, Doris Day and Clark Gable. The, really? Yes. Now, would these people come in themselves, or would they send people to to? No, they used to call me from the studios, and I used to go. I I still go and take measurements. The designers that they give me the pictures where they want, and I make the shoes to the size of the actor. Wow. That was nice. Look at all these pictures. Yes. They're the Golden Girls down there. The Golden Girls, they used to work across the street. They used to make the show in, uh, in Raymar. Very nice. Did nice. you meet all of them? Well, I never make shoes for her, them. I repair shoes for them, especially Miss Betty White. She was a wonderful lady. Okay, the tour begins. This is a wonderful room back here, Willie. It feels good back here. It feels old-timey back yeah. here. What's going on back in this room? I want to tell you, this is, uh, this is the last that we make the shoes for uh, Jesse Jackson. You made Jesse Jackson yeah. shoes. This is the, this the last use. This is the form. So wait a minute. These are all this forms. Is the, this is the food. Yes, it's the food of the people. So you don't have this labeled. How do you know this is Jesse Jackson shoe? Yeah, because we have it here. We have it in the tape. Oh, okay. Yes. So whose shoe is? Like we have a, a Bill Cosby. Look at these. We've got a whole thing. This is Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby shoe. <laughs> now this is your workbench, right? My workbench, right? Tell I, us what goes on over here. Yes. So the, when they give me the picture, I make the, I get the last, and I make the, I make the pair, the, the pair. Huh? Now this is when you're making someone's shoe. Right. And what kind of shoes do people come in here and ask you to make? Whatever they want it. They want to have a ladies, men's, they want to have a pumps, boots, high heels, whatever they want it. So you make boots here as well? Uh -huh. From scratch? From scratch, yes. Are these, did you make these? Yes, we make these as uh, nice uh, slippers. These. Slippers. So people still have their shoes made? Yes. Some people, they love to have it made because they don't be able to find in, in the stores the width or the style, they like it. Uh -huh. So they draw pictures or they bring me the old shoe and they ask me, make me a shoe this style and my size. I say, okay. Doesn't that get expensive? Well, it's a little expensive, but they, people love to pay what they want. It. People are willing to pay. Yeah, people are nice. Wow, are there many people still making uh, shoes? No, no, not by hand. No, unfortunately, no many shoemakers anymore. Before, they used to be in Beverly Hills, a lot of Italian shoemakers, very good shoemakers. And, uh, and we Latin people, just a few. But custom shoes, custom shoemakers, no. They, they, they don't want to learn, the young kids, they don't want to learn. They want to make money right away. Quick money. Quick money. Okay, the tour continues. We're now in the back room. And you got somebody else working back here. Right. He's a very good shoemaker. He does all the repairings. And uh, he's, he's fast. He's okay. He's been here with you. Carlos has been with you. 22 years. 22 years. So it's it must be working out pretty good. Yes. <laughs> It's, ah. it's like a family. Now, over here, Ro, can you come down here and talk to us about this? Because this is very interesting over here. This old equipment. Old equipment, but good as new. Now, what good do you mean? New. These machines are never to be invented again. They were just made once, and it's the best quality ever. This machine must have been with us for at least the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's an inside nailer. It has a wire that nails the shoes and makes the heel stay in place. There's no other machine that will replace What's it. What's this thing over here? This is a sole presser. A sole presser. Sole presser. A lot of the newer shoes do not need to be stitched anymore. They're made out of rubber sole that can be stitched. So when we add it to the shoe, we put it here. 
we press it down. This is how it stays. It only needs to be there for 30 seconds. Take them back again. And the shoe is together. And these machines to me look like they were made to last. These are serious. These are the real Everlast machines. Yeah. There's no way to be invented again. What is again. this? This is a stitching, this is isn't it? Outsole stitcher. May not have anything to show you. This is a Landis, one of a kind, oiled all over the place. It doesn't have a place to keep oil. <laughs> so it's very dirty, but that was the way it was made, and the new ones don't have um, that ability either. Usually used for welted shoes. You put it in here, and it welts all the outside stitcher. Okay, we got a boot. A cowboy boot. Once we put the sole in here, all it needs to do is go right in there, and it will stitch right through. And it will give us brand new, beautiful stitching. Are you doing that by hand, or does that thing run automatically? It needs to run automatically. Right now, we're just doing a sample. It runs, it can probably give us 100 stitches per minute. Wow. This is what's going to look like. Why thread? And how old is this machine? This machine, I believe it's 27 years old. Willie looks bought a lot it older than that. It this just needs a little like... maintenance. <laughs> it needs a little makeup, but it's, it's good as new. The makeup has nothing to do with the quality of the work here. That's a cowboy boot. We have an insole stitcher, McKay. Yeah, this is, this is, look at this thing. This looks like it ought to be in a doctor's office. Right. What? <laughs> looks like a tooth safer. <laughs> now this does the inside stitching of a sole. It goes, the thread goes inside. It's not to be visible uh -huh. outside. The way you operate this one, put a shoe right in here. I'm not gonna penetrate this shoe. Yeah, we don't wanna just play around with somebody's shoes here, just to demonstrate. And it stitches all the way through. That's the, uh, the most efficient way to stitch an insole for wow. a dress shoe. So now, if is this the way, if we had come in a shoe shop 40, 50 years ago, exactly we'd the see way. the same? Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Good quality shoes have always been made out of leather, and these machines were just made to save the shoemaker some time, because everything is meant to be roughly by hand. Uh -huh. These shoes are just I guess like the glory of a shoemaker it doesn't have to pull the thread and it will save you hours of work. But it still does it the old fashioned exactly. hands on way. Correctly. And Carlos has been doing what he does basically the same way all his life, hasn't he? All of his life. Have, a lot of materials have changed. Like right now he's priming a sole in order to add the heel. Uh -huh. because it, rubber will not bond with regular glue. Newer glues are being made. That is what's changing the chemicals. But, but it's still done by hand. Exactly and that's the what same makes way. this place so special. That's correct. Is that it's not automated, it's not separated from the human touch and feel and from the, the, the craft that this is. You're, you're an There's artist. There's no other way to fix shoes. If you do it the other way, it's only gonna last you for a couple of minutes. Traditional, it's the key of excellence. Now this looks, this has an amazing look and feel to it, Willie. Where are we now? Yeah, we are, this is the dye department, and this is the man, his name is Juan. Hi, how you doing? Huel Hauser, nice to meet you, you, sir. He does the work, very good work. He's a good worker, he's a good man, and we are so happy to have him here with us. You've been here with us for 16 years. Yeah. Yeah, that's his, and we get along very good. It's like a family. How very important good. is the dye department? Raul? Well, at this shop, no shoe leaves the shop without passing through Juan's hands. He touches every single shoe that comes in here. Any minor repair work that we do, he polished them. I can't even tell what, look at this. There's, <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of everything on here, sir. Yeah. How do you know where everything is? I know it is, it's every the color is for uh, So you know by color yeah. where everything There's more color over there. The oh front. my this whole yeah. room is full uh, yeah. of bottles of color. For every color I chose. It's but good. you like dyeing I like it. shoes. Yeah, sure. That's a whole skill, isn't it? You will think that all this is messy, but every one item here takes a great role 
and shoes. We have a yellow pair of boots there at uh -huh. the table. They need to be dyed some sort of green. Juan here will strip the shoe off. Wait a minute. There are the, the yellow boots there, and he's going to make them green? He's going to make them green, like a pale green. Those shoes are made in um, in the United States, customly made, and they're going to be used at Los Angeles Opera. He will strip it off and make the color new. This wow. is like a lab. He'll grab every color, mix a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and he'll give you the color that you're looking There's for. There's a whole skill level to whole, this, isn't whole there? whole operation, and it's no way to find a formula. His formulas are in the head. So it's all in your head? Yeah. I know. <laughs> you know every color. Every color I had in my head. <laughs> <laughs> now here's a lady who's come in really for the first time. This is the first time you brought your shoes in. That's right. This is Why my first this time. place? It just looked nice. What do you mean it just <laughs> looked nice? I was driving by. I needed my shoes fixed. There it was. I liked the fact there was parking right in front. Uh -huh. My other option was Beverly Hills. Who wants to drive to Beverly Hills and to have their shoes done? And when you came in here, did it feel good to it you? It did. It did. I thought, wow, look at this. This has been here for a while. Yeah. It must be good. Absolutely. That's what I thought. Well, let's take a look. You're getting your shoes back. Don't they look nice? Now, what did you have done? Well, the heels were all worn down. And when you walked, they went click, click, click. And uh -huh. that's annoying. And they're very nice, expensive shoes. And look, they polished them up for me. They look beautiful. Wow. See, you're and used to having, customers. to hearing good, happy customers. Oh, yes. The customers are wonderful people. I do. The know. people recommend one to another one, and then they come and they come back and they recommend another customer. I'll be back. And this is the way we build at this place. So you don't have a big advertising no, budget. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Got you in here, didn't That's it? That's right. Just driving down the road. Happy to be here. We're standing under this wonderful picture of you and your wife. You were married for how many years, Willie? 54 years. And she helped you a lot. Oh, yeah, it was my right arm. Yeah. And the other thing that catches my eye in this picture, you're holding a cat. It's, yeah, her name was Shoeshine. The cat's name was Shoeshine. Shoeshine. My father always told me you can tell a person's character by whether their shoes are shined or not. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Some people are very careful. Uh, I'm a, one of them. <laughs> always, I like to have my shoes clean. And, uh, and I'm glad that I'll be able to do it. Some people, they don't care, but I do. This guy, he, he, he shines shoes very good. I'm a shoe shiner. That's how I started into the shoe company, but you probably want to think about that. Look at his shoes. Oh. Ah. They're not shiny. Well, they're they're dock siders, and they're Excellent. not supposed to be shiny, but they could Fresh be cleaned up a little bit. They should be cleened up a little bit, waterproofed. You shoes. busted me. Shoes are the most important item. Every time I see someone, I meet somebody, I shake their hand, look at their eyes, and then look at the shoes. Really? And the what shoes does it don't tell you about them when you... About personal care. Yeah. You know, if your shoes don't have to be the most expensive shoes, but they must be clean, you don't have to pay the professional shoe shiner to have them polished. You need a little bit of polish at home clean him up in a brush. It's about personal pride, about having pride in your appearance. That's correct. That's the only thing I would judge someone the first impression. Shoes. Well, <laughs> I don't know what that says about what you think about me. Well, this is the second time I see you. I believe last time we met you had some clean shoes. <laughs> You're working today. That's everybody's excuse. These are just work shoes. I think they're in your feet. They should be clean at all times, 100% of the time. Yes, sir. Totally. So, get your little car. I'm going to clean my shoes. <laughs> he busted me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at this old Singer sewing machine, Willie. This thing, how old is this machine? Well, this machine been making for more than 100 years. This machine is about 40 years old. Wow, and you still stitch on this thing? Yes. When the shoes are already made, we'll be able to stitch them up inside. I'm looking at this machine over here. Look at that old machine. Oh, this is fascinating. Look at this. This old sewing machine. Now we've come across a long-time customer. 
Yes, I am. I've been coming here since the mid '70s with my mom. Since my really? mom brought me here. I live in Pasadena. I drive all the way here to see Willie. You're a kid. That's right. So here's Willie right here. Here's Willie. Hello, sir. <laughs> you're nice you're to actually see you today. bringing your shoes in. I am. I need new heels. So you've been working with this lady for over 25 years. Yes, she was in high school when I met you. That's right. Wow. I, was. Yeah. I, was. I remember you. My 25th high school reunion is this year. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. See, a good shoe shop is hard to find, isn't it? Well, it is hard to find, uh, but although I've never had to look because I've only ever come to Willie. You're spoiled. <laughs> I am very spoiled. I'm sure there are lots of them in Pasadena. I've never been to one. I've only wow. ever come here. And what is it that hooked you into this place? Well, he's kind, and he's he must be a magician because how he finds anything back there, I'll never know. Um, but it's always perfect, and he's, it's an amazingly fair price and he's a wonderful kind man and um, we all knew and loved his wife and we know and love Willie and it's just a pleasure to, to keep coming and I'm delighted that the store is not going away. And here's the interesting part, the other layer to this story because Willie you've been in the shoe business here in Los Angeles for over 50 years now. Right. right. One of these days you're probably planning on retiring. Yes, I've been retired this year I'm going to be 90, and I've been, I've been thinking about the slow down. Slowing down a little bit at 90. Right. But you still come I, in. I still can because I can stay away from the shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's in his blood. But Raul, here's the real good story here about the two of you and how you came together. About to be in Willis. I'm driving by Waring Boulevard one day, uh, getting some coffee for a friend. And I see the shoe shop. Now, I shine shoes for a living for the last five years before I met Willie. And I figure, huh, maybe this shoe repair shop can do some repair work for us and so that we can offer the service to our customers. So I stopped. I walked in. Willie was working, and I offered my service. He said, thank you very much. I'm too busy already. Maybe some other time. Why don't you stop by later? So I did. I made it a routine every Friday. I would stop by to chip chat with him. I got to know that he is a shoemaker, that he can make shoes out of scratch. And I got very interested. And I said, Willie, how about you teach me how to make shoes? He said, sure, why not? You can come in any time. I made it a routine. And every Saturday I was here, we'd drink coffee. We never got any work done because we're busy chatting. <laughs> um, it developed to where I was so interested and I started to be here five days a week getting familiar with the shop, with the shoemaking, and I love it. I would like to be just as good as he is to make shoes one day, but it's a long process. So he so was, you kind of taught Raul a lot of your knowledge, shared right. your knowledge and well, skills. I'm glad to share my knowledge with him because he listened and he's willing to learn good. And he's a good boy. I like him very much. So and, uh, this friendship developed yeah. just I, out of nowhere, just by accident, by yeah. chance. Yes, and it, it grew up more than a working relationship. I like to say that I would like to adopt this guy as my grandfather. You know, I don't have the grandfather figure. He's right here. Uh, he lives alone. I visit with him all the time, and it got to the second level, more than just a working, um, you know, master and apprentice relationship, it got more personal. And now though, it's developing yet another layer because you're going to someday take over this whole operation. Yes, sir, that is, that will be a uh, great thing to happen is the master plan. I like to become a shoemaker. I like to make shoes before I can say I'm a shoemaker. I run the shop, the shop, has traditional excellence, but I'm bringing the new modern business class into the shop. We're going to take credit cards. Uh, one of all these newer things that would continue to attract people, not only the old customers that are known to be coming here. We know that everybody wears shoes, so everybody would like to have our service done. How do you feel about Raul stepping in? Well, we blend very good. I like him very much. and. Uh, he listened and I tell him, he asked me, how are you going to do this work? I said, we're going to do this work, you do this, you do this. And he listened and he does the work right. And the people are satisfied, they're happy. And I'm happy too because the, the prestige of the shop is still on. So and you feel on. like that it will continue with him 
after you're gone. You know it's in good hands. Right. No, he's, he's a good boy. I know he's going to be a good boy because he's a young man. He's 24 years old, and he has a lot, lot of life in front of him. So he, he's going to be okay. Do you believe in fate? Faith is number one for me. That, I, that, that you all were just thrown together. Faith, destiny, I think, I feel, a lot of people tell me, hey, Roll, you're a lucky guy. You're working with Willie. You know, learn as much as you can. I guess that I reached luck a long time ago. You know, when I started stopping shine and doing shoe shining and business was good, I feel blessed. What you got in your hand there, Willie? This is the first tool I bought here in the United States. The first check I make in the factory, I bought this hammer. Wait a minute. This is the first tool you bought with that first paycheck back in 1949. Right. That's look at the, the, this. Look at that. That's historical. <laughs> <laughs> You've kept it all these years. Yeah, oh, yes. It's, it's my brain. Can you remember how you felt when you bought this first tool? Well, my dream was to make shoes. And I have to have a tools. See, I have to make a choice, but I have to have a tools. So I have to buy this, and then next week I bought another tool, another tool. So I'll be able to make a choice. But without tools, you can make it. So this was the very first step right. in achieving your dream. Right. My dream came true thanks to this. Wow. Good luck. I want to give it to you so you can preserved for the rest of your life. And you're gonna put here the tag, the first tool Willie bought it here in the United States, 1949. Okay? Thank you. All right. Most important piece of the treasure, hammer, 1950s. It's still hammering. This is always gonna be Willie's. It will, hopefully we'll do another 50 years in shoe crafting. Thank you very much. It's a nice compliment. <laughs> they keep going with the name. It's very good. Had you heard that before, that he was going to continue with the name? He told me once, he told me once, it's this this name, Willis, even when he answered the phone, he answered the phone, it's Willis. I said, I feel good. <laughs> no worries. Right, thank you. It's a pleasure to you. see you. You, I too. Love you. you too. Uh, I'm seeing you at the cathedral. You know I work at the cathedral downtown. Are you? Yeah, oh. I do. So you have to come work. I've been there about three years. So you have to I know you do. I know you do. Because you know my friend Terry.